Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your favorite podcast. I'm Kelly. And I'm Trisha. Wait, I'm like, my voice was like cracking <laughs> during <laughs> that. Do it okay. again. I'll just address my voice. I'm sorry. I was feeling a little bit sick for the past. <laughs> oh my God, what? <laughs> Well, there's so proof. sorry. There's she's proof. not lying <laughs> for the past like week, and you can still hear it in my voice. And then I went to my friend's wedding on Saturday, and I was like screaming. Mm. And now it's Monday, so that didn't help my voice no. either. And then the alcohol, drinking alcohol, did not help my voice. Weirdly, alcohol makes you like lose your voice. It does. It's really yeah. weird. Erin, mm-hmm. my sister, used to lose her voice every single time she drank. <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird. So my voice is a little weird, but it's okay. I'm surviving. It's yeah. just like a spooky, raspy voice. I was just thinking Yeah, that. it's perfect. Yes, <laughs> for this October season. Yeah, exactly. So we're doing our annual spooky stories. We just almost got into a heated debate right before we recorded mm-hmm. or hit record. I was like, wait, no, we should just say this on the podcast. It was very heated. Yeah. Like, I think the podcast might not survive. Yeah. Trisha was throwing hands. Yeah. I was like, I'm sorry. So we'll do it live. <laughs> <laughs> for everyone to listen. We were talking about the difference, or not the difference, but what's worse, a ghost or a human? And the movies, what's scarier, a ghost story or like a killer story or something mm-hmm. like that? I think a killer story. I think paranormal is scarier. For okay. Me. I was just saying that I don't watch like horror movies anymore. I mean, I never really did, but like sometimes in high school, I'd be at someone's house and they'd put it on and I'm like, okay, I can't be the loser that says, no, I don't want to watch that. I'm at home. Yeah, where's my mom? So I've seen Paranormal Activity and The Conjuring. And to this day, that was that had to have been like 12 years ago at this point. I still think about those movies. And I'm still like, if I'm home alone, I'm like looking behind my back sometimes. If I hear a creak, I'm like, oh my God, is it Bathsheba or whoever is in the con? I don't, <laughs> should I speak her name out loud? I is she going to come for me? That stuff spooks me. I am afraid of like killers hiding in your basement, but I don't know. I, I think like a ghost haunting you is creepier to me it is I, I feel like it's just less believable for me but I think that's why like if I had to choose between like facing a person or facing a ghost my first thought would be a ghost but that's because I feel like I can just be like well ghosts aren't real but right then it's like loophole if you <laughs> see a ghost that means it is real yeah true so now there's a ghost in front of you mm-hmm. so now what like I now don't what? know yeah it's not even a loophole because it's like in this realm in the rules of the question hypothetical hypothetical no. that's exactly yeah. what it is in the hypothetical ghosts exist so i don't know i guess i don't know can't kick them what do you do you literally can't kick them i don't know i don't know so we're gonna read spooky stories today i gathered a list like i just feel like i always gather the lists for the story episodes like over a really long period of time because i've said this before I just think to have like a hard hitting story, they're not yeah. super common. You know, like sometimes they're like every once in a while I will hear a story that I'm really like, oh my God, that's mm-hmm. crazy. So it just takes a long time, in my opinion, to gather stories that are like truly, truly shocking. So I don't remember any of the stories that oh, I've perfect. gathered. I don't remember if they're hard hitting. Perfect. Yeah. We love that. But as the podcast goes on, I'm like more and more like critical of the stories that mm-hmm. we share, I feel like, because once you hear so many, you're like, yeah, I've heard I've yeah. heard a crazier one. So I, I can't mm-hmm. even say that one. So I'm hoping that these ones are like actually spooky. And I have two lists. I have one that's like close encounters, like not paranormal. And then okay. I have one that's like paranormal. Okay. I might have mixed them up a little bit because I feel like some stories that you hear, someone might take it in like a literal way and mm-hmm. someone might take it in like a ghost way. True. Be like, oh, I thought it was like a, a killer in the in the forest. And then other people are like, oh, I took it as like haunted forest. Yeah. So okay. who knows if they'll be like split. But true. I saw my one note when I pulled up this one list of stories. It was in the paranormal story list, but I wrote a little note and I said, actually insane. <gasps> Should I start with it? Oh my God. Yes. Okay. Wait, do you have any other thoughts about like what's worse or are you Um, ready to jump in no I think well okay I have one thought it's not like what's worse but I think it's maybe why I'm more I I am typically more drawn to the ghost stories and maybe it is because in the back of my head it is like okay maybe that's not real so like I can handle them better but also I don't really like true crime for many reasons we've talked about it before on the podcast I'll still listen to it every now and then but I'm not like the biggest fan of it also it's kind of like those are real people why are we like glorifying it anyways but for like the spooky season i love fall it's my favorite time of year 
like obsessed with fall. <laughs> Call me basic. I dare you. I love it. It's okay. <laughs> I love fall and the, the leaves and all the prettiness and stuff. But I also really love Halloween and the spookiness of it. And like when fall comes, any TV show I watch, it has to be like a little bit spooky. It has to be on theme. And I changed my phone case for this season. Oh, I see it. It's just brown. Oh, but I it's like just it. like it's a little it's bit vibey. Autumnal. It's yeah. having like twitches. Yeah. <laughs> and then my phone screen has to be fall. So cute. And even my uh, my home screen, I put little like fall pictures I of a cow it. there. It all has to, like I'm very like everything has to match the season. But when it comes to fall, like everything re- like TV shows, my phone, everything has to match what season I'm in. And I just feel like stuff with like witches, ghosts, zombies, like that is the vibe I'm going for. So I really like the paranormal stories because they fall in season. But like the killer true crime stories could be any time of year. That's a good point, actually. Okay. So like the spooky stories that I hear on like other podcasts and similar to like what we do, like I just love the paranormal ones because they just like, okay. they really satisfy like whatever is in me that needs that like spookiness this time of year. And then once it becomes Christmas, I'm like, don't mention a ghost to me at all. <laughs> I'm done with that, but it's like I need it. Yes. So okay, I'll like, read from my paranormal list. Well, no, like no, I'm, I'm open to other things, but I'm just saying like that's like, that's what I gravitate towards. I feel like yeah. so most of mine will be like spookier, not but like that's a great crimey. point. So I feel like that's like inspiring me to go for the, okay. the paranormal okay. ones. I can't wait to hear the insane one though. I know, me too. Whether wait, it's when- person or paranormal, I'm excited. When you said the thing about true crime and like serial killers, and yeah. like it's like the real person. I saw like a clip of a podcast where they were talking about like like memorabilia from a serial killer, Ooh. and they were like, "Oh, like it was like Jeffrey Dahmer's like real glasses." No. Or like I was like, "That shit should literally go in a garbage can yeah. and be like desecrated." Wait, is desecrated a word? It should be like disrespected, thrown into a dump, and yeah. like. People should like say how disgusting and like gross it is. Like, yeah. Why the hell would you want that? Like, I was like, that is not cool to me. Like, imagine somebody murders your loved one and then somebody else is like, ooh, I got his glasses. Yeah. I'd be like, fuck you and fuck the glasses and right. fuck him. And literally, I hope he rots forever because it's not yes. like a scary little story. It's like, mm. They literally took lives of innocent people that were very loved by like their family and friends. And right. now you're like, ooh, I want his shoes that yeah. he wore. Like, ew. Yeah. Like, do that to your favorite movie. Do that to like yeah. a scary movie that's fake and made up, like Jason right. or the guy from The Shining. I just like thought that was so weird. Cause yeah. it's like, why would you actually want like what? he's a criminal? Yeah. Like, why do you care to have like I don't know. It's not like they're like a cool character. Yeah. Like and like there's there's just plenty of celebrities and famous people to do that for. Like we don't need to do it for murderers and criminals. I agree. It was just like such a weird. I don't know. Yeah. I was like, I have never listened to a podcast and been like, I wish I had a mic right now. Like I've never felt more passionate yeah. about this. I was like, I want to be in the room being like, what are you talking mm-hmm. about? Yeah. Like this is not cool at all. But yeah, I don't know. Whatever. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. Okay, I agree. Sh- should I read the scary story? Yes. Okay. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Okay. And I have to say, I remember last year we just kept saying ew and that was it. So I feel like this year again, we're not going to have much more to say <laughs> than just like ew. <laughs> I know. I loved us saying ew. And I think somebody commented one year was like, why are they saying ew? It's a ghost story. And we were like, because it's scary and gross. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a natural reaction. Right. Okay. I'm nervous. Here we go. Spring break of 2010, my buddies and I decided to camp out on an island at a local lake. One night, as we are cooking food and drinking beer, a canoe floats by with one guy in it. He asks how we're doing and we invite him to our island for grilled meat and beers. Being in South Arkansas, we naturally assume that everyone is friendly and wants to hang out. His name was Kurt and he was super friendly but really seemed to be sad. We asked him what was up and he replied, oh, nothing really. It's just that my friends are probably worried about me. He looked at me and winked. They'll find out soon enough. Oh my god, I feel like I'm hearing noises. (sighs) That still haunts me to this day. Everyone liked Kurt and noticing that it was getting dark and he had been drinking, we offered to let him stay with us that night. No. 
He declined, saying that he had to get to where he was going, and he seemed very adamant about that. I asked where he was headed, thinking maybe we could give him a ride on a jet ski or something. Kurt ignored the question and said, you boys don't know how lucky you are. He hopped in his canoe and left. We didn't think much about it. The next morning, we woke up early to do some fishing. As we're fishing, a police boat pulls up. The officer asks if we're part of the search party that found the body. We obviously have no clue what he's talking about, so he tells us this... (gasps) So he tells us a story about a young man in a canoe that disappeared last week. Oh Apparently, my God. divers found the body at the bottom of the lake two days before. The young man's name was Kurt Clark. It was so freaky for us. We all packed up and left camp that day. And there's a link to the news story. Wait, I have chills. Me and too. I got chills like a few seconds ago and they're still here. Ew, me too. <laughs> There's literally a link to the news story. Oh, my God. The fact that he said, my friends are worried about me, but they'll find out soon enough. (gasps) That's crazy. It also makes me sad. Oh, that makes me sad, too. And Kurt died and his friends somehow, Oh, my God. Ew, the guy, like, in the canoe. Just floating by. Oh, my God. What if he's just, like, in his canoe for the rest of eternity? (laughs) Oh, ew, that's so scary. Well, I agree with myself. Wow, that, that was is insane. insane. Those stories are like the best though when like something happens and at the end of the story, it's like a bomb is dropped and it's like, boom. Like I know, like they tell the story well. Yeah, I was going to say these that I have aren't really like, they kind of just end like open-ended. Yeah. Which is fine. But I really like those that like really get you. Yeah. You don't see it coming at all. No. Wait, I did find an article. <gasps> oh, my God. What year is it from? I'm so 2010. curious. 2010. Oh, and my they said, God. Yeah. Is Wait, a- this is another This is another post on Reddit that says, a group of spring breakers in Arkansas have a beer with a ghost. This is not my story. I'm just sharing it because it's intriguing. And then it's the story that I just read. Oh, my God. The above is one of the witnesses' testimonies to what they experienced. Below is an online newspaper article with information about the deceased. Searchers on Monday recovered the body of a teenager who drowned when his canoe capsized in Lake Awachita last week. They found the body of Curtis Peyton Clark in a about 43 feet of water oh my god is there a picture of him like alive um no Mm. i'm sad though that makes me sad that's so crazy that's sad that's wild wow okay i'm shook i have one i used to live in a small village of about 140 people at that time probably less now in northeast france About 100 meters from our home was the home of the parents of my stepfather, and right next to their house is the house that used to be the home of his great-grandparents, who both died long before my mom and I arrived in the village. It was the beginning of summer in 2013. The house of the great-grandparents was now occupied by a Croatian man. We'll call him Mr. G. He arrived in the house about a year ago at that point, and since it was summer, he left to visit his family in Croatia. So he asked us to watch his house while he was gone which I did. I was 17 at the time, by the way. I would arrive at around 8 a.m. in the morning and leave around 11 p.m. It was a nice house with two floors, and while I would spend 90% of the time on the first floor, I would sometimes have to go upstairs to go to the toilet. One day, I was about to go back home, but before that, I had to go upstairs to go to the toilet. The second floor always felt a bit off at night, like you weren't supposed to be here, like you were perturbing someone or something. The second floor was composed of four rooms. Two bathrooms and two toilets, two rooms and one bathroom and toilet on each side. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I always use the toilet on the left, though, as the one on the right didn't have any lights for some reason. Anyway, I go upstairs. The door of the toilet on the right is open, which gives off a creepy vibe as it is pitch black, but I decide to not pay too much mind about it. I enter the left side's toilets and do my business. Then, as I open the door to leave, I see on the toilet across the hall the face of a woman, or more precisely, the head on the toilet as if it was put on it, looking at me somewhat smiling. Not a man- manacle smile, just a smile. That scared the living hell out of me. I just ran out of there leaving the lights on and my computer there. 
A little bit of backstory. Remember that I said that Mr. G arrived in this house about a year ago. Well, before he arrived, the house was bought by a family of two who ended up having a third child while living there. They arrived in 2009, early 2010, and then abruptly left in 2012. The reason as to why they left is pretty sad. Apparently, the father worked a night shift, and one night, the mother had a terrible headache, like bashing your head on the wall to calm the pain kind of headache. And apparently, they didn't have any medicine for it, or at least it wasn't strong enough. At one point, she went to get help, so she left her house and went to the neighbors. Unfortunately, she died on their doorstep. She died of a ruptured aneurysm, and after that, the family left shortly thereafter, which is understandable. Also, remember that I said my stepfather's great-grandparents died long ago. After the great-grandfather of my stepfather died, his wife committed suicide shortly thereafter. She did so by jumping in the well that was located at the crossroads 20 meters or so down the street. The well was condemned afterwards. To this day, I'm not sure if it was a ghost or my imagination, and if it was a ghost, I think it was probably the mother and not the great-grandmother of my stepfather, as the face looked young, like in her 30s. Oh my god. I would continue to come each day, and I would leave earlier and not go upstairs after sunset. That's it. (laughs) It's like, that's a little creepy, especially being in, like, France. I feel like everything's old there. Yeah. You know? And I thought when they said bashing their head against the wall, I thought it was going to be like she bashed her head against the toilet. <gasps> and like died. Yeah. Or something. Oh, ew. Oh my God. That's so scary. To ew to see know, that at like night. Head. No. Yeah. <laughs> ew, I'd be so scared. See, I'm like not scared of ghosts until there's a ghost. Yeah. Until you hear about it, you're like, okay, yeah. I could not handle that. <laughs> My grandfather died last year, sometime when my son was maybe a year old. We had dinner with the whole family every Friday night, so my son had seen him several times. My grandfather was a very quiet, proud man, but when he thought he was alone or unseen, he would make silly faces at my son to get a laugh. A couple nights after his funeral, my son, who liked to crawl into bed with us in the middle of the night, just started laughing uncontrollably at like 2 a.m. So I get out of bed to see what's going on and find my son sitting in the middle of the living room in the dark laughing. I say, hey, buddy, what are you doing? In toddler speak, he says, Papa, funny. I got a little nervous for some reason and went to pick him up and bring him to our room for the rest of the night. And as I'm hauling him away, he says, bye, Papa, and blows a kiss at absolutely nothing I can see. Oh, that's that's kind of sweet, but mostly creepy. (laughs) That's crazy. I don't like kids just sitting in a dark room just laughing. Or anyone, I guess. No. No, thanks. No, that's so... I would actually be terrified, actually. Yeah, what would you do, like, if that was your kid? I would, like, I honestly feel like I might run away. I don't know. (laughs) Maybe not. I don't have kids. I don't know. I'd probably have, like, the the instinct to go grab them or something. Right, yeah. Oh, that's so creepy. I feel like it's something that, like, in theory, or, like, it's so cute. Like, if it happens during the day. Mm Mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, haha, that's like so special. But in the middle of the night, Mm -mm. I'd be like, no. No. Can just nobody that loves me ever haunt me or any of my family members during the nighttime? Yeah. Only in the daylight. And like, maybe don't like just linger in a doorway or anything either, you know? Yeah. Like, don't be like a shadowy figure just standing at the foot of my bed. Mm hmm. I would prefer that maybe yeah i would prefer like a butterfly or like a bird like landing on me and like bringing me a flower or something you know definitely definitely okay glad we got that cleared up (laughs) yeah i hope people are listening good thing all of our family and friends are so supportive exactly and listen to every episode of our podcast exactly this is a true story from several years ago now So for about six months, I rented out a basement from a family. I lived in another state for work. It was just convenient and cheap at the time and worked out for everyone. The basement was unfinished but had studs up where the walls would be, had heat, but a cement floor. And living in the northern part of the United States during the winter, it regularly got quite chilly at times down there. So much so that I had two space heaters to keep warm. The family who owned the house had quite a bit of stuff piled up in the basement as well. They were mild pack rats, not hoarder level, but you could tell they hadn't unpacked everything from their last move. Bags and boxes and totes and everything piled up. I had the one central area to myself where I had my bed, my TV was set up, a few chairs and whatnot. It was like a small studio apartment. Anyways, I've had some paranormal experiences over my life, but this was on a new level. It began probably a couple months after I moved in. I started feeling, I don't know, uncomfortable, I guess is the best way to describe it, when I would go to bed for the night. I'm not usually one to be terrified of the dark, but I began to sleep with a light on in the next room over. Really, the only separation between my room and the next were the wall studs. 
uncomfortable like I didn't feel okay in the dark and closing my eyes. I'm not sure, just weird, I guess. As weeks went on, I would sit down there and play Xbox or watch TV when I was not working. I would see a shadow move out of the corner of my eye, walking between the wall beams in the next room over. This was obviously concerning, but having had experiences before, I wouldn't say terrifying. Just like, oh, that's creepy. It was a fairly regular occurrence, maybe once or twice a week. Then the dream started. I had recurring nightmares about a female apparition, very scary looking with long flowing dark hair. The dream always took place in a house I didn't recognize and I knew the spirit was I knew the spirit was in there with me, but I didn't know where. It would always jump from behind a corner and scare the crap out of me, and I would try to run away from it, but I couldn't move fast enough, and just before it caught me, I would snap myself awake. Those were the worst part of my experience there. I would wake up shaken and usually sweating and out of breath. Finally, I asked the homeowner if anyone had ever told her there was something in her basement. Something with quotes around it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I remember her face went a bit pale and she told me that other people had reported things happening down there from time to time. There were some examples, but I don't recall what they were now. I do remember that she told me she had some belongings down there that had once belonged to her first fiance. He had killed himself many years prior, but she had hung on to some of his stuff. I found my own place shortly after, moved out the dreams immediately stopped no more shadows it totally stopped after leaving thank god that's weird that See, is I feel weird like that stuff that like like the thing about them leaving and then everything stops mm-hmm. makes me like believe it more because mm-hmm. like i feel like i could be like oh well you probably just like have anxiety and so therefore you're having nightmares yeah but right. like the or fact like you're under stress at work or something yeah. yeah the fact that as soon as you leave this house and that's like the only thing that changes in your life mm-hmm that's when yeah. it stops Ew. yeah oh i don't like that especially like in your dreams something is jumping out and scaring you like how scary is that uh, i don't know ew, 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 ew. a few weeks ago my girlfriend and i were sleeping together when i woke up to her saying what are you doing she sometimes talks in her sleep but this sounded so coherent and urgent that it jolted me awake and i asked what she was talking about she then woke up and said she thought she saw someone at the end of the bed. Ew. That's what I'm saying. I don't want anyone at the end of my bed. Yes. <sighs> <sighs> Thinking it was just a dream or a semi-hallucination, we thought nothing of it and went back to sleep. About an hour later, I woke up and saw someone standing. No. Mm-mm. <laughs> standing no. on the bed. <gasps> no. Uh. No. With the sheets wrapped around, wrapped up and twisted to their neck. I didn't know what to do, but the first thing that came out of my mouth was, what are you doing? <gasps> Ew. Uh. Ew. <laughs> Ew. My girlfriend then woke me up. I had been dreaming the exact same. I had been dreaming the exact same thing that no. she did and said the exact same thing. I know it's the power of suggestion or whatever, but F that. No, no, not the exact same line. No, I feel like I could cry. No. I'm like so shaken by that. The same sentence is crazy. Yes. And not the, not the like, oh my God, stop. It's the, what are you doing? Yes. No. Ew. But like, okay, so many things to unpack here. I won't, I won't. But like, (laughs) why is that the first thing you say? No, I know. Do you know the person? That's creepier. Yeah. What are you doing? Not like, who are you? Or get out of my house. Yeah. Or or like, just screaming. Screaming. Yeah. Just like a panic. Like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Ew, 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 ew. Oh, that one was, that one was like short, but like <laughs> packed a punch. Yes, I agree. Ew. How do you move on from that? Ew. Standing on the bed too, just like a person with sheets wrapped around them. Ew. What are you doing? No. Mm. I'm like tense right now. No, I know. Ew, ew, ew. I'm like picturing it in my own room. Same. Yeah. I'm like, stop picturing it. I know. Because <laughs> it, it didn't have an image before, and now I'm like thinking about it more. <laughs> they painted a good image. <laughs> they did. Ew, gross. So also, could they see the face if the sheets were just wrapped up to the neck? Yeah. Like, was I mean, it? I'm guessing it was dark, right? A dark oh. figure. That's always what it is. Okay. Ew. I was helping my younger brother move into an, into an apartment with his buddies and had to bring my two very young daughters with me. My youngest at the time was about two and a half or three and fearless. She went to different rooms with my brother, exploring and having a jolly old time, until she got to the kitchen. Upon entering, my daughter froze. Her eyes were huge and fearful, and within 10 seconds, she was screaming bloody murder and running for me as fast as she could, mumbling about the lady. 
in the kitchen. Brother and I tried laughing it off, redirecting her and taking her mind off it, but my normally calm kid was hysterical and we had to leave. She told me in bed that night the lady had red eyes and was scary. If you knew my daughter, you'd understand how unlike her all this was. She was 100% convinced she saw a lady just standing in the kitchen and still to this day, seven years later, she swears she did. I don't believe in ghosts or what have you, but her reaction made us question that. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks. See, like, it's just the lurking. Like, why? What's with the lurking? I know. And just, like, standing and, like, they're just, like, waiting for you to, like, happen upon them. I don't like that. Ew. I don't like that. <laughs> No, that's creepy. Ew, I would not want to live in the house. No, same. Red eyes? No, thanks. Gross. Mm Mm-mm. I am the youngest of two older brothers. My middle brother had passed away in 2005 and one of my cousins had given birth to a boy a few years later, so he's never seen or heard of my brother before. Fast forward a few years, when the boy is old enough to talk, I think like five, I guess my aunt was telling my mom that her son has an imaginary friend that he's been talking about named Michael. Now, both my aunt and mom played it off as kids will be kids sort of thing. That was until my aunt began explaining this imaginary friend and how it had some coincidental things that directly related to my brother. First, this Michael would wake up with the boy at night wanting to play basketball. The kid didn't mind because he liked basketball too, but it was in the middle of the night. Secondly, Michael tells him that he has an owie and points to his throat. I'll get back to this later. Then the trippy part comes when my mom went to visit my aunt. She was sitting on the couch watching TV while my cousin and her son walked in. Her son was hesitant at first and then walked back to his room. My cousin went to my mom and told her he's being shy (gasps) he's being shy because he told me that is michael's mom i was then told if you show him a photo of my brother he points to it and says that's michael even when i went to their house the boy did the same thing and this time the cousin said he whispered to me saying that's michael's brother (gasps) here's the kicker my brother's name is Travis Michael. He liked to play basketball in high school and he died from a freak accident while riding an ATV. He shattered his Adam's apple and basically suffocated. <gasps> he has an owie. <gasps> See, the thing is, that is freaking crazy. Like, yeah. the fact that he's pointing to him in photos. The fact that he's pointing to his mom and says that's Michael's mom. Yeah. That's his brother. Yeah. Like, kids can make up a lot of things, but, like, if the kid was actually making it up, he'd probably point to, like, that guy in that photo. And then if there's another, like, guy with the same color hair, similar, like, a lot of people look alike to kids, you know? Mm -hmm. They could just, like, point out someone that looked like him. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah, that's Michael today. Like, it seems like he didn't miss. Yeah. The name. The owie. The The basketball. basketball. Oh, man. No. Oh, but, like, why in the middle of the night, though? See, that's another thing. (laughs) Why does it have to be in the middle of the night? Why can't we just play basketball during the day? Like, it doesn't have to be the middle of the night. No. It really doesn't. It always seems like it's the middle of the night. Why? I wonder if it's because, like, people are half awake at that time and maybe you can see stuff better. Like, you can see ghosts better. Now I sound woo-woo, but... I don't know. It's always at night. I know. Even like historical whatever ghost stories from like hundreds of years ago. It's like nighttime when scary stuff happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's always at night. I know. And like not to be like a skeptic, but like one thing that always makes me like skeptic to these stories or skeptical to these stories is like a lot of this stuff is like at 3 a.m. at blah, Mm -hmm. blah, blah. And it's like time zones aren't real. True. So like let's even really think about like the night that it turns daylight savings and that daylight savings turns off the clock switches at like 159 or 259 i forget Mm -hmm. and then you either repeat that hour or you skip to the next one like what happens on that night like does the ghost like like oh shit hold on i missed it yeah like come back tomorrow we've got to adjust for daylight savings or like during daylight savings does like the ghost come at 4 a.m or they come at 3 a.m right or 2 a.m and they're like sorry i would have been at three but like daylight savings you know it happens yeah they probably love Arizona. <laughs> yeah, right? And probably like the rest of the world yeah, doesn't have it. Way more consistent. So I don't know about that. But I yeah. I feel like it's the other parts of that story that make me believe that, that like yeah. really get me. It's the other details, you know? Right. It's never like the, at 3 a.m. I awoke. It's like, okay, yeah. 3 a.m. Like, what is 3 a.m.? And like, this is not really on the same topic, but people who are like, oh, I saw an orb of light. I'm like, okay. Yeah, so did I. Like, I don't know. Like, my eyes are blurry at night. I don't, 
I don't know. That stuff isn't, like, convincing to me. Yeah. Or, like, the, like, if it's, like, a baby monitor Mm -hmm. and there's, like, stuff floating through it. Yeah. I'm like, there is dust dust in the air. Like, come on. It's (laughs) dust. Unless it is, like, doing backflips off of, like, the baby's crib or something. Mm -hmm. Like, dust floats by in rooms. And on night vision cameras, you can see dust. Yeah. So, like, that stuff doesn't get me as much. Yeah. I don't know. I okay, agree. let's move on. I agree. <laughs> I don't know. I feel bad being a skeptic, but... But somehow. you have to be with this stuff. Yeah, you kind of do. My grandma passed away three years ago. Her birthday was in January. In 2020, her number was still active. It was a prepaid number. If you paid X amount, your number would be active for a year. Just after midnight on her birthday, my mom sent her a text saying, Happy birthday, mom. Just before 1 a.m., she received a text from that number saying, Thank you. We went over the next day just to find the phone exactly where she had left it before she died and the battery was dead. No. Thank you. That that spooks me. Again, it's like so short, but I'm like, oh man. That That's really so creepy. Thank you. Ew. Uh, that is cre- I don't know. Sorry, I'm like being annoying or like reading into it, but just like thank you. Like and there was no exclamation point or smiley face, just thank you. Not like hi honey, miss you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wouldn't you think a ghost would say more if they were missing their daughter? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they only had the energy to say so much. Oh, that's true. Sometimes my parents send me bland text messages. Like, they are not texters. That's true. Maybe it's just her generation. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. think I've ever gotten an exclamation point in a text message from yeah. my dad. Okay. Rarely from my mom. All right. Sorry to this grandma. I'm sorry. It was a nice text. The spirit of the grandma. Yeah. It was nice. Nice of you to reach out. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming. <laughs> When my mom was still married to my biological father, they lived in Pensacola, Florida. He was an actor at the time, and his troupe performed at the Sanger Theater. My mom wasn't allowed to drive, so he would have to do all the driving. She would often get stir-crazy and and suffer cabin fever, so she made him take her with him to dress rehearsals. My mom eventually took it upon herself to help out in the rehearsals. While the actors practiced their lines, the orchestra rehearsed their music, and so on. My mom would move around the theater taking notes. She would write down any issues she encountered when sitting in different sections of the house, like if a prop or piece of a set blocked the view of an actor from one angle, whatever. At the end of the rehearsal, she would pass her notes along to the director and producer, who would then pass them on to the proper people. During one particular rehearsal, my mom was sitting up in the balcony and proceeded to head back down to the main level. The lights were still down, so it was pretty dark, and she was seven or eight months pregnant and couldn't see her feet. She missed a step and nearly fell forwards when she felt something grab her right arm and pull her backwards. It had a very tight grip on her arm and began to pull at her, urging her to go ahead. She proceeded down the steps, noticing the grip not releasing at all. Ew, I have chills. When she got to the landing, to the main level, she turned to thank whoever pulled her up But nobody was there. There were no marks, no bruising, nothing to show that her arm was grabbed. A ghost saved her. Yeah. See, that is, like, nice to me. That's, like, divine intervention to me. Yeah. Like, maybe that wasn't even, maybe that was, like, an angel. Yeah. Or, like, I don't know. Wow. That, I I like that. And it's, like, they didn't let go until she was, like, down the steps. That's kind of cute. Oh, my God. What a crazy feeling, though. Yeah. To be, like, to, like, to feel something so real. Right. It's, like, sometimes crazy to me to think about stuff like that. Like, literally grab your own arm like Mm -hmm. this and, like, pull it back. Like, Like, there's no mistaking. Yeah. Exactly. what that is that's what i yeah. think about with that stuff like mm-hmm. you're so sure of it because it's like you felt it and like sometimes like you can feel like a touch like that like linger after right like, you know what i mean like yes. and she probably felt it like lingering after yeah like, it like was she so could point real. to right where it was on her arm or something because like right. you can still feel yeah like you can feel it like after you let go you're like yeah i just felt that like ew but also cute. and it and it was like tight like it was a tight grip like you know what a tight grip feels like it's not like someone just like tickled you or a feather brushed by or yeah, something I, that's a good point too because if it was just like something tickled her or like brushed by her she might have been like "Ooh, that was weird yeah but it was so strong that she wasn't even scared she was like oh someone's behind right. me and someone she, just grabbed me when they saw me tripping like yes and she didn't person. trip yeah like it was that grip it was so real that she literally thought it was oh there's no way someone is not behind me right. like she didn't even think anything of it that's crazy. Wow. Oh, my God. I. 
if that were me like I would think back and be like wow grateful but in that moment I would be like running for my life like terrified I don't even know what like what would you think after that like if if someone grabbed you and then you turned around and there was nobody there like I would walk back up and I'd be like hello did someone just follow me down like I would like need to investigate yeah like what was that and where'd they go yeah and then I would actually be like is there cameras in here I guess this was like probably a a while ago but like is there cameras in here like who was up there is there any possible chance that someone was up there like that would be so crazy wow wild I do appreciate that one though I like those where it's like someone's falling and then they're caught yeah it's like wholesome we've read them I feel like on this podcast but I've heard those before it's it's nice makes me a little less creeped yeah when I was growing up one of my best friends told me about a very creepy situation involving him his younger brother and a man in the window oh god the window it's always a man it's always a window yeah. <laughs> not any window though it's the, the window. window oh, oh sorry, yeah I just hit my mic the window yeah <laughs> when my friend and his little brother were younger they shared a bedroom they're some years apart but his younger brother was born with a multitude of different health issues including a multiple sclerosis and he's confined to a wheelchair and cannot care for himself so to keep an eye on him overnight when his parents couldn't they shared a bedroom one night my friend randomly woke up for no reason in particular and happened to glance over at his younger brother but noticed something very startling a strange silhouette of a man wearing a top hat oh my god it's always a top hat sorry side note anytime something really creepy gets read i feel like the wind gets knocked out of me <laughs> like i'm so spooked i like can't breathe yeah, for a second i feel you ew okay a strange silhouette of a man wearing a top hat looking in through the window behind his younger brother's crib no Mm-mm. The first thing my friend did was jump up and turn the light on, then ran into his parents' room to tell them what he saw. When his parents came back into their room to investigate, his younger brother was having a seizure in his crib. A few of his family members say it was his younger brother's guardian angel standing in the window that night. My friend believes it was death. It's all still pretty unsettling to me. Wow. I just got chills. Whether it's a guardian angel or death, that... Those are the only options. That sends a shiver down my spine. Me too. I got the chills too. Not the top hat though, please. Yeah. Please. I've shared before on here that I had my sister and I had a dream on the same night of a man in a top hat. (laughs) Wait, yes. And we both had sleep paralysis in those dreams. And didn't you have something physical happen? Like the chair in your room moved? Yeah. We sleep in different rooms. And on the same night, it was like in November around Thanksgiving, I think. My sister said that she was asleep in her room. She has like sleep paralysis. And so she says in her sleep paralysis, she knows she's in her bedroom and she sees stuff going on around her like live. For me, for my sleep paralysis, sometimes I'm in a dream and I I really cannot move. Okay. I don't know if that counts as sleep paralysis or not, but like for Julia, it's like her eyes are somewhat open. She can see what's going on in the room around her, but she can't move. Like her body's asleep, but like her mind isn't. Her mind isn't asleep. Okay, okay. So but she's in- perceiving stuff like through her eyes. She's perceiving like her room as Got it. it is in that moment. But what would be like happening like in her room? Is it just like nothing's happening? Nothing. But she's just like seeing like her closet. Her yeah. Room. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So she had sleep paralysis one night and she claims that she saw her door open and a man in a top hat walked into her room and I think stood at the end of her bed. No. Yeah. Yeah. And this was a few years ago. So I I should like ask her what exactly happened because I'm sure she knows more details. But that same exact night I had sleep paralysis. But for me, like I said, it's more like I'm in like a dream state. I just cannot move. I'm in the dream and I'm like stuck wherever I am. I can't lift a single finger. It feels like I'm like a rock solid statue. I can't talk or anything and it's like actually very unsettling because sometimes I'll feel like I have to run away from something or I'm trying to speak and I can't speak because I can't like open my mouth but stuff's happening around me and I can't like move or speak or anything and it's always like a scary dream yeah so I feel like some people might be like oh that's not sleep paralysis that's just like a bad dream but I feel like there's there's got to be different types of sleep paralysis and that's really weird that you had the same like figure come to you on the same night so for me I was like stuck in my bed but it was more of like a dream version of my bedroom but I was stuck in my bed and I knew that there was someone under my bed speaking to me and for some reason I knew it was a man in a top hat (gasps) I knew it that's so I knew it weird like in the dream and then I woke up in the middle of like that night I got out of that 
that dream and i have like i had used to have an antique chair like just like a wooden maybe like a dinner table chair but i had it at like a desk the chair was like pulled out and kind of facing my bed which i don't know how the two how anything connects there it was just weird and creepy and that's so creepy yeah i either my sister or i brought it up the next day and the other one of us was like no way like i had the same man or whoever it was come to me too do you remember what they said to you like no okay and i don't think i did even right away like i woke up and i didn't know what the conversation was ew but you guys imagine laying in bed and you just have a desk your desk is next to your bed and your chair was pushed in yeah you were always so like a yeah (laughs) and an antique chair is pulled out from under the desk and is facing you yeah the creepiest is that it's like old yeah. antique. <laughs> this is not some like yeah. ikea like no. desk Mm-mm. chair Mm-mm. it no. was like an ornate wooden chair anyways <laughs> men in top hats i don't know what do you what are you doing what business do you still have yeah. here when i was a young child i had the same dream every night for years about drowning when a huge wave swept over me and i sank to the bottom Years later, I had a temporary job delivering mail one summer during college. I saw this old lady sitting on a front porch waiting for me. When I got up there, she looked at me and said in a foreign accent, You drowned when Oceania, 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 sank beneath the waves. Freaked me out. You drowned? Ew, a past life. Wow, these are good. The past life thing is very scary yes oh how did she know who is she okay yeah who are you (laughs) i was sitting in my room after getting out of work on the second floor little bro is downstairs watching tv the dog is in the hallway outside my door sleeping all of a sudden dog starts making all kinds of racket jumping around barking clacking nails howling i go to get up to see what's up and i hear oh that's a good girl in a male voice It didn't sound like little bro, so I go, oh, you're home early, thinking it's my dad's friend slash our roomie as I open the door. Soon as I'm out there, there is no one at all but the dog wagging her tail staring at the empty end of the hallway. Little bro comes upstairs to yell at me for getting his dog riled up, said he heard the same voice thinking it was me or our roommate. We did a once over of the house with my butterfly knife and his BB gun and there's nobody. Still gives me the spooks to this day. Ooh, who was that? Ew. Dogs know. <laughs> Dogs know. Dogs can see. Something invited itself into my friend's home. When I was younger, I had a next door neighbor named Lexi and she was my best friend. Our parents would go on trips on motorcycles with each other and we would camp out at one of our houses until they came back. It was normal for us. We never had any paranormal events prior to this specific night. We were sitting in the bedroom talking and doing what we normally did. We saw a bright light through the window, followed with the sound of motorcycles pulling onto the gravel driveway. We instantly think, okay, our parents forgot something. But before we could even get up to leave the bedroom we heard a knock and a soft woman's voice say hello Mm -mm. the front door opened Mm -mm. this was a familiar sound because the door scraped against the hardwood flooring we panicked thinking there was an intruder at this point because this woman didn't sound like our family we scouted the house scared out of our minds just to find the front door wide open and nobody in the driveway no oh God. nobody was in the house we finally felt better we walked into her bedroom but before she went to enter she collapsed onto the floor and started sobbing i didn't know what was happening i was scared and she told me something as tall as the door frame was standing in her parents room after our parents returned her family continued to have paranormal activity in their house they moved out too <gasps> oh my god physical things are like different yeah. like a door opening I, like how could you deny that ew oh my god i literally feel like i can't breathe after i hear these Ew, that was so creepy i also really don't like those not that i like know about this lore that much but i feel like there's stuff where it's like oh you have to invite something in it can't get to you without your invitation or you have to like ask a question and then that opens the can of worms that stuff really freaks me out and the fact that this was called like something invited itself in to my friend's house i'm like oh ew hello no no thanks that's so scary tall things too no tall things i don't like those either as tall as a doorway no i don't like that (laughs) 
So not short of scary, but really weird. Two days after my grandfather died, the neighborhood security guard knocks on our door on a Sunday morning. He told us, an old man came to your house earlier, knocked on your door for a half an hour, and finally left. When I asked him what he wanted, he told me he needed to say goodbye to someone he never had the chance to meet. We were all stunned, had no idea who this old man was or who he was looking for. When the guard came in, he shouted, that's the old man, pointing out a picture of my grandfather. My entire family froze for a minute. I'm not 100% sure if the guard was telling the truth, but I almost like believing that my granddad wanted to say goodbye to my newborn sister before resting in peace. Oh my god. That's sad. Yes. Wow. Aww. That's so sweet. About a month after my dad died, I was a week into school and slept through my alarm. If I got up then, I'd have 10 minutes to get ready before having to leave. I would have been late if I didn't get up right then. Suddenly, I wake up to a male shouting my name at the foot of my bed. No man stood there, nor was there any male in my house at the time. My mom said she never called me, so my dad woke me up that morning so I wouldn't have been late for school. Aww. That's cute. I feel like I've woken up to what I thought was someone shouting my name and it and it wasn't. I've definitely had that too. I have weird. I have nightmares yeah. a lot. So I feel like Do that, you? Yeah. But I feel like I don't like think anything of them cuz yeah. it's just like anxiety is like so weird. Yeah. Like it manifests in nightmares. So, my dad was a pilot his entire life and ended up dying in a plane crash. Not his fault. Actually, I never learned what the cause was. The plane, a single engine, went down shortly after takeoff. Ironically enough, his father also died in a plane crash when my dad was in his late 20s. A few years ago, to memorialize my dad, I overlaid the words from the poem High Flight onto a photo of his plane since I had also read the poem at his funeral. The following paragraph regarding the picture was written by one of his close friends. I had a wooden plaque on the wall of my hangar office with this poem on it. On several different occasions, I found your dad standing there in silence reading my plaque. Each time he would comment about how he loved that poem. My wooden plaque had hung on the wall without being moved for seven years. I had stopped by the office and was checking my email. The silence in the office was broken by the plaque falling off the wall, hitting the floor, and splitting perfectly into two pieces. This was approximately one hour before I received the phone call about the crash. When I heard you recite the poem at your dad's funeral, I got chills. I am forever certain that your dad visited me that day and wanted me to know he was there. The plaque remains today in two pieces displayed on the mantle over my fireplace. Wow. What? That's One crazy. Hour. Wow. Oh my god. It hung there for seven years and then it fell. An hour before yeah, he crashed. That's crazy. That's insane. My mom owns a cafe and the building is extremely old. During the first week of being open, the crazy neighbor came in and told all the previous failed businesses that used to be here and how she senses that the spirit living here wants her to do well. Whilst working for my mom, I had two experiences that kind of freaked me out. The first was really early in the morning and my mom and I were doing some prep. We heard someone saying hello behind us and both turned around at the same time. I checked the whole building and found no one. The second was late in the afternoon and a cake dome, the thing you put over cakes to keep flies away, flew off from the back of our counter and broke on the floor. The crazy neighbor was right in the end as she's now had the cafe for 15 years. My mom and the staff all have their own crazy stories, but those two were the only ones I've experienced. Interesting. It's interesting that they both heard the person say hello. Yeah. Because I feel like if it's just like, I don't know, like one person here, like I've definitely heard things before yeah. and like it didn't turn out to be anything I know. that I know of. I feel like your mind is so powerful. You can yeah. definitely think you hear things. Yeah. Especially just like a quick little hello. Like you could definitely think you heard that. Yeah. And it's not real. Do you ever like hear things? Like sometimes I feel like, especially in like loud rooms where a lot of people are talking, I'll like think that the person next to me said something. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, wait, what? Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. But then them saying I didn't say anything is like so much louder and more clear yeah. and like closer than the other thing. Right. So I feel like it's like your brain is probably just picking up on like what someone else is saying. Yeah. And it's like tricking you into thinking that like, I don't know. So yeah, whatever. no, I agree. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I was probably six when my youngest sister had passed away in her sleep. I'm from a large family of nine kids, and it was very hard on my family as we were a very close group. Well, for a few months after she died, I would be visited by a warm pinkish or warm white figure at the end of my bed. <laughs> 
<laughs> Why are you at the end of my bed? Mm-mm. In the night. <laughs> it felt warm and comforting, and a few times I thought it was my older sister. We were close in age and sometimes sleep in each other's rooms. Years later, I opened up about the figure. My older sister instantly lit up and said she saw the same figure and often thought that it was me. Maybe just a traumatic response of being young and imaginative, but the fact that we both had the same experience was really freaky. Wow. Wow. Why is that the end of your bed? Always. I want to know. I guess that's better than it being like right next to you, like right at your face. Yeah. Like over you. Yeah. Like floating above your Ew, bed. Oh, yeah. Ew. Yeah. A girl I knew for a few years and was very good friends with had passed away in a car accident. A few days later, I have a dream that she's standing in the center of the road and I'm barreling towards her. That's terrifying on its own. Yeah. I run into her, but she appears in the seat beside me. Ew. She forces my head toward her abdomen. Where her stomach would be, there's a large mouth. The teeth are made of broken glass and sharp metal. She keeps saying the word shh, shh. I wake up from the dream and I'm still hearing shh. I look, no, no, no. I look at the foot of my bed and she's standing in my room. No. She walks through my door and into the hallway. I follow her. She walks down the hallway and vanishes through the front door of the house. No. I didn't realize at the time that my dad was on the couch. He asked me if I was okay and asked if the flickering lights are what woke me up. He didn't see her and I never noticed the lights flickering. (gasps) Ew. Oh, God. Ew, that's terrifying. Oh, my God. Why would you follow her? Why would you get up out of bed and follow her? No. Ew. That's so scary. Did you ever watch Stranger Things? Yeah. The flickering lights? Yeah. Like the upside down? <laughs> When I was 20, I visited a town in Italy that has a medieval tower that you can climb. My girlfriend didn't want to, so I went up on my own and was the only person at the time doing so. It was a hot, sunny day when I entered the tower. There was a flight of stairs that wound around the edge of the tower and no windows. Climbing the tower took at the very most five minutes. At the top of the stairs, there was a ladder and a trap door that opened up onto the roof of the tower. When I opened it, I found the weather had changed dramatically and was overcast and threatening. I forget if there was thunder or not, but I was genuinely concerned about lightning being at the top of a tall tower in that weather. I cautiously climbed out onto the roof just to have a quick look before going straight down. The roof was surrounded with a sort of metal cage of bars that were presumably intended to prevent anyone from falling or jumping off the tower. I heard some thunder and saw electricity arc between some of the bars. Not a blinding lightning strike, just arcing. I decided that the tower was imminently going to be struck and I and descended as quickly as I could. At the bottom, I was surprised to find the weather was again sunny with a clear sky. My girlfriend could tell I was shaken and was amazed when I told her I thought that maybe there had been lightning. The weather hadn't changed at all whilst I'd been up the tower and had remained sunny and clear. I'm very much a skeptic when it comes to the paranormal. I'm not religious and I've had no other weird experiences like this. In short, I'm not your stereotypical spooky things happen to me kind of person and yet I have no explanation for this. I've tried since to figure out which tower it was. I spent a couple of summers traveling around southern Europe and climbed a lot of old towers and I'm fairly sure it was the Torre Grossa in San Gimit. Jimin, Na- oh God, this is where my family's from too, and I can't say it. Wait, really? Mm-hmm. Wow. San Gimignano. <laughs> Gimignano. Oh my God, that's so embarrassing. It doesn't have a cage around the top, but there is a metal cage around the bells, and that must be what I remember. Wow, I need to Google that right now. Ew. Wait, your family's from there? That's so cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. There's like a few different little towns, and they're so small, and I'm pre- that's one of the names that I'm, I'm, I always hear. Wow. I'm pretty sure that's one of them. I'm becoming an Italian citizen. What? Yeah. How? My uncle is like organizing it all. He got an attorney and he has a house in Tuscany. Like Mm -hmm. he bought a villa there. So I think he looked into becoming a citizen. I would assume to make it easier for like traveling there and stuff because now he owns a house there. But all of my mom's grandparents were born there and they like lived there for a while and then they came over later in life. So my grandmother... I think had dual citizenship because her parents were from Italy and also okay. my grandfather had dual citizenship I believe. My mom because both of her parents or maybe even just one of them had dual citizenship I think she's able to then get her citizenship. Okay. And only if she does that then I can do it as her child. Wow. If she decided not to I'm pretty sure I would not be able to but she's like yeah of course I'll do it. 
Yeah. So I'm doing it too. And we had to get like some special paper notarized and wow. we have an attorney and then there's like an attorney over in Italy who's going to like show up in court for us, I guess, to appeal for us to get our passports or something. I don't know how any of it works. I feel like if any lawyers are out there oh listening, God, so cool. they're probably like, what the heck? So basically yeah. you would be able to like go and live there for like six months and like not have a visa because Pro- you're a citizen. Yeah. Probably. That would be like yeah. the benefit of doing it. Yeah. And okay. also like, I think it's just easier to move between European countries with like a European passport maybe. Oh, really? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you were just yeah. there going. We only went to one country. Okay. We, I feel like we're blessed like in America because like you can go almost anywhere with an American passport Mm -hmm. yeah so I didn't know like what the benefits were but I guess yeah maybe that is true like moving throughout Europe yeah I don't know but I've never done that why not yeah that's so cool I know wait you're not gonna have to like pay taxes though right to like two countries oh my god is that that a thing I don't think so probably not probably not there's gotta be something with dual citizenship that protects you from that but maybe not I don't know wow I don't know yeah oh my god you're such a girl of the world I know right my one co-worker was like you're not telling me that patricia whalen is becoming an italian citizen like with the most irish name. irish english whatever sounding name yeah you know? i'm like yep <laughs> that's so cool yeah i know Man, i love that i know exciting stuff okay i feel like we end on your like happy story okay sounds good back. yeah we, we ended on a fun fact a fun fact yeah i know and that will be my fun fact like forever oh my god you should go to yeah. that place in that story i that should tower. i should it's maybe. probably where they live right or yeah. no because your uncle doesn't live where your family's from no no he has a house oh my god i don't remember the town that he that his house is in it's a small town in tuscany i feel like tuscany only has small towns for the most part yeah well i think florence is considered tuscany which is bigger but oh really i'm per- pretty sure hmm. i don't know but yeah so i That's i don't so think cool. he's i don't think he's with where my family's from but i still have cousins like in those towns where my family is from yeah so yeah, that's so cool yeah I'll, all i it's easier to say they're like an hour outside of rome okay and actually the town name that's why yeah. i don't know the town names i usually just say they're like right outside of rome yeah i mean so. nobody would know like yeah unless they're from there like a little mm-hmm. town you know? yeah Wow, that's so yeah, cool, though. fun stuff. I know. Oh my god, you go. You have to go and live there for like three months. I know. For you should real. go for like whatever time you would need a visa for. You should just go for like a little bit longer than yeah, that. Just because I the, can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Okay. Well, yeah. we ended on a happy note. You're yeah. welcome, everyone. <laughs> we did you a favor. I I actually don't want to like think about those stories again. <laughs> right I know. Now. I know. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit this during the day. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I know. Otherwise, you'll be like alone at night. Like the only one I awake, know. Just listening. Yeah. Uh, no. Creepy. No. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Well, happy spooky season, everyone. Yeah. Hopefully you liked our episode. And if you have any spooky stories of your own, please share. Please. I would love to know. Oh, them. my God. I would love to hear it, too. Yeah. The write-ins are so good because it's like that's the first-hand experiencer sometimes. I know. Sometimes. Sometimes it's like, oh, I heard this happen. But yeah. I love the write-ins. I do too. Yeah. We should go back to our roots and do more story episodes. I feel like we haven't done one in so long other than this. Yeah, true. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. Yeah. And we love you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.